Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Cooking for the Family. I'm Devon and today I'm going to share with y'all how I make my Irish cream cake with buttery Irish cream glaze. Now I did a chocolate Irish cream cake. It came out wonderful and so I'm going to put a link to my Irish cream chocolate cake in the description box below. But today I'm sharing with y'all another version of an Irish cream cake you can do. So I'm using a 13.25 ounce box of yellow cake mix. And then to that, I'm gonna be adding some vanilla pudding. And this is the 3.4 ounce of vanilla pudding. I also put in a fourth of a cup of milk and I'm using 2% milk, but you could use 2% milk or whole milk. Either one of those will work really fine. Now in the description box below, I will have a list of all the ingredients you need to make this delicious yellow cake, Irish cream yellow cake with the buttery glaze. And to my mixing bowl, I added in a third of a cup of vegetable oil. Also the vanilla pudding, was instant vanilla pudding that I was using. Next, we're gonna add our eggs and I'm gonna put in four eggs and I'm using large eggs and we're gonna put in four large eggs at room temperature. And if you are using the 15.25 ounce box of yellow cake mix in the description box, I will have that adjustment as to how much of each ingredient you would need to use um, if you're not using the 13.25 ounce box. Now next I'm gonna put in some Irish cream and we're going to be putting in 3 fourths of a cup of Irish cream. And this is the Irish cream liqueur that I'm gonna be using. Now if you are new to my channel, welcome in. And if you're a returner, welcome back. And to all my subscribers, I thank you so much for your likes, your shares, your subscribes, your good vibe comments. I truly appreciate it. My little channel is growing. And it is such a joy to share my kitchen with all of you. So next, I put in the eggs. And I put my eggs in just one or two at a time just to give the eggs just a, t a chance to kind of mix in with the rest of the ingredients. Once your cake batter is done mixing, it'll be a little bit on the thick side. And you shouldn't have... Uh, any lumps. If you have lumps, it's going to be a few and they should be relatively tiny, but any big pocket of lumps, be sure that you want to go ahead and disperse those and break those down. Also, when you're using a mixer or a hand mixer, we make sure that any dry batter or any pudding that happens to settle at the bottom of your mixing bowl, you want to get in there and make sure that you get that up so it can be well incorporated with the rest of the ingredients. Now, once I'm done mixing, this is what you want your batter to look like. You want it to have this kind of consistency and, and look to your batter. I remember as a teenager making cakes uh, in the kitchen and my mom, I could hear her yelling out to me, Devon, do not over mix that cake. And my mom would warn me that my cake was going to be tough if I kept beating it. And so anytime that I'm mixing cake, I can always hear my mom's voice about don't over mix your cake. And when it comes to making a box cake and turning that box cake into so many different recipes, my mom was a whiz at doing that. And so I know that is definitely where I get it from, just watching her just take a cake, a box of cake mix, and just turning it into so many different creations. And so now I have my, uh, this is a 10 cup bunt pan that I'm using, and I've sprayed it with some nonstick spray. I'm gonna bake it in the oven at 325. So our cake is out of the oven. It's baked at 325 and I baked my cake for 55 minutes. Your cake is gonna bake anywhere from 50 to 60 minutes. And so it is looking good, it is smelling good. We're gonna let it just slightly cool. While our cake is cooling, I'm gonna get started on my buttery Irish cream glaze. So in my skillet, I put one stick of butter and I'm using salted butter. Now to that, I want I went on and I let the butter melt. Now once the butter has melted, then I added in one cup of granulated sugar and I'm putting in a fourth of a cup of water. If you're using unsalted butter, go ahead and add in a pinch of salt when you add in the sugar to your pan. And just a pinch, a pinch is gonna be about an eighth of a teaspoon. So a pinch is typically around about an eighth of a teaspoon is what you wanna add. I am using salted butter because the salted butter is really gonna make a nice flavor for our buttery glaze. Now what I'm doing is 
with the um, sugar, you want to go ahead and dissolve the sugar with the butter and the water. And you see how I'm taking my spoon and going around the outside edge of my pan because I want to make sure that I'm getting all of the sugar. Sometimes the sugar will settle around the outside edge just like that. And so go around that outside edge to make sure that you're mixing and dissolving the sugar. You also are going to go around in the inside as well. And I'm going to be doing this until I don't feel any grains of sugar that is nice and smooth. And then also I just kind of pick up my spoon and I'm looking at it. It's going to start to foam up in a little bit. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're just really going around mixing really well. I'm listening and I'm feeling to see if I feel any of those granules of sugar. Once I see that around the outside edge and in the middle, my sugar has totally dissolved. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop mixing. And also you see how um, our glaze is kind of foaming up a little bit. That's also an indication it's time for me to stop mixing. Everything should be nice and dissolved. And while I was doing that, my flame was on a medium. Now what I do is I stop mixing and I turn my flame down to a low. I'm going to let it continue to boil without mixing it at all for eight minutes. So set your timer. Do not mix it for eight minutes. The reason why we do not want to mix it is because once we start mixing it again, what happens is our crystals of our sugar start to reform and your glaze will be grainy. So it's important to not mix it and let it do a nice boil for eight minutes so it can thicken up and become that nice buttery glaze. And so since it's been eight minutes, then I went on and I started to remix it, moving everything around. You saw I went on and I turned off my fire. It's going to be foamy just like it is here. And now I go ahead, I'm going to add in a half a cup of our Irish cream. So I'm adding the half a cup of our Irish cream. Once I add the Irish cream, I'm going to continue to mix our glaze. And remember, my flame is off. And you see what's happening? Our glaze is starting to turn this beautiful amber color. And just continue to mix just like that. Just like I'm doing there. And as our glaze continues to cool, as it slightly cools, it will also get a little bit thicker as well. And so our glaze looks good. It is smelling so good. This glaze, let me tell you, you could take this glaze and serve it as sauce over some vanilla ice cream. It is so good. It is that good, y'all. And it is going to go great on our cake that we made. And so now what we're going to do is, and remember, the most important thing is you want to mix your um, sugar and butter and water until the sugar is totally dissolved. Let it go on and simmer on low for that eight minutes without stirring. Then go ahead, stir it after the eight minutes, turn your flame off, then go ahead and add in your Irish cream and then just mix everything together. So I have here, these are actually, this is actually a chopstick. And so I always like to save chopsticks. And so anytime that I need to poke my cakes, I just go ahead and use my chopsticks. I'm going to go all around because I'm going to put that nice warm glaze. We're going to go ahead and put some on top of our cake right here. And then we're also going to flip our cake out and put more glaze as well on top. And so with this, you just want to go ahead and take your time because you want to make sure that the glaze, we're going to use about half of the glaze, about a third to a half of the glaze I like to put on the cake like this and then the rest of the glaze I put on after we flip the cake out and so while the cake is still warm our glaze is still warm and it hasn't thickened up too much we want to go ahead and start a spooning the glaze all around our cake just like that you want to make sure that you get down into those holes that we have poked and go all around the sides now once we have spooned glaze all of our cake you want to let your cake rest until it is cool before we try to flip it out. If you try to flip out your cake while it is still hot or very warm, what's going to happen is you're going to have problems with your cake sticking. And so it's important that you do want to have your cake cool down before you go ahead and flip it out. 
And so we just go ahead, I'm gonna put the glaze all over. You see how beautiful and shiny it is. Also with your cake, um, optional, you can also use a one cup of chopped pecans. And what you would do is, once you spray your nonstick spray, your bunt pan full of spray, you put the chopped pecans in the bottom and then put your cake batter on top. So that way you can also have pecans uh, in your cake if you like that as well. Now what I do is I take my butter knife and you see how I go around, my cake is cooled now, and you see how I go around the edge and how I gently lift. So I go around all around the edge. Then I go the inside ring and I'm also kind of gently lifting. So I'm separating the cake from the inside ring and I did the same thing on the outside. I'm kind of lifting and then I really like get in there and you wanna like tap, tap pretty, you know, firmly tap. And then I also shake to make sure that my cake is gonna lift out. Then I do one quick swift motion and flip it. As soon as I flip it, then I go ahead and I pull my cake tin up and you see how it comes out nice and clean. And that's something that my mom, um, you know, taught me how to do to get your cakes out of your pan nice and clean. And so now I've got the rest of my glaze. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put our glaze on the rest of our cake. I'm going to poke a few holes around the top, also around the sides and the inside ring. And we're going to put some more of that glaze and drizzle it all over our cake. I'm going to use my spoon and it's such a beautiful color. You see how beautiful that color is. And you want to make sure that you go ahead and put your glaze all over. And I'm going to be visiting with a few of my neighbors today and tomorrow. And I'm going to be sharing some cake with them and their family. I have a good friend of mine that unfortunately she broke her arm and had surgery. And so I'm going to take her a nice slice of this cake. And I'm also going to take her some dinner as well to cheer her up. And so this cake is just going to be perfect. And so also what I like to do is I like to take my brush, my little pastry brush, my silicone brush and go around the sides and kind of dab the glaze all over in the inside ring as well as on the outside. Our glaze is looking good. We have gone on and finished putting our glaze on our cake. Time to cut into our cake to see what it's looking like. I'm going to get your piece ready because I'm going to give the first bite to y'all. We're going to see how we did with our Irish cream cake with our buttery Irish cream glaze. And this cake pairs so nicely with a nice cup of coffee or if you want to make yourself a nice cup of Irish coffee. So let's see what our cake is looking like. Oh, it's looking good, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and cut into the cake, get your bite ready. Okay, go ahead and take your bite. Now I'm gonna take my bite and see how we did. Mmm, mm-hmm. The cake came out so good. The glaze is buttery. The Irish cream comes through so good. Well, I hope you give this recipe a try. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I invite you to hit that subscribe button. It's free. If you like this video and appreciate the content, don't forget to show it some love. Give it a thumbs up. Click share. Share this video with a friend or family. And don't forget to click that notification bell so you can come back and visit me again in my kitchen. And remember, it's always good when Devon is cooking for the family. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.